Signal Private Messenger has become really popular over the last few weeks. It has skyrocketed in downloads on all of the app stores. Uh, it's even ranked in the top five now for social networking apps on the Google Play Store. But they have gone through some growing pains during this period of extreme growth. So first, there was their servers getting overwhelmed by the sheer number of new users. In fact, it was so bad that for about a week there, I had to use Jammy, a peer-to-peer -peer messenger, for all of my contacts because Signal just wasn't working. It would take like five minutes, 10 minutes sometimes to just send a text message through or to receive one. And, you know, I've been using Signal for a long time, but a lot of new users, they were just thinking that Signal services sucked. They were like, oh, okay, sometimes the servers are down for this messaging app. I guess I'm just going to go use something else like Telegram. Um, but now there is another issue that Signal is facing, which it's an issue that they faced before and they're going to face it again. The whole reason that this is popping up now is because of their new recent popularity. And this is what happens when you have a centralized service. Signal is being censored in certain countries, mainly Iran. So the reason that this is a problem for apps like Signal and not Jammy, Element, or any other peer-to-peer -peer or federated messaging application is because all of Signal's communications pass through their servers. They're still end-to-end -end encrypted, so it's not some nonsense where they're just doing server-side encrypted, but in order for you to receive messages, in order for your messages to be sent, they must go through Signal's servers. So if you're the Iranian government, you can just block communications to Signal servers nationwide and boom, problem solved. You don't even have to worry about, you know, backdooring everyone's phones to make sure that they can't access the app or spinning up your own like Iranian version of the Google Play Store where the Signal app isn't available or trying to block all these different sites that have the APK and prevent people from sideloading the app. You don't have to do any of that because you can just block the service. So even if people manage to install it on their phones, they're not going to be able to use it. So today we're going to take a look at an option that is available to us to help the folks in Iran uh, that still want to use Signal by basically we're going to be setting up encrypted proxies for them to connect to so that the Iranian government can't see that they're using Signal. But I would say that a much better solution would simply be for the Signal devs to reconsider adding support for Federation to Signal or peer-to-peer -peer communications to Signal. Now, as far as I know, they are still against doing that since this very question was brought up on GitHub almost five years ago, and it was addressed by Moxie, who is the CEO of the Signal project directly. And they said no, that they are not like it's not likely that they will ever uh, add federation with any servers that's outside of their control. So high level guy, CEO is pretty much the highest that you can get within a company, said it's not going to be a thing. Um, and it really hasn't been addressed since then, or I couldn't find any addressing of it since then. Uh, there was an AMA um, on Reddit with the Signal devs just under a month ago. And they responded to a lot of questions. I saw many people asking about Federation uh, and Signal being added, but none of the devs responded to that. So I think it's pretty safe to say uh, that no, Federation is never going to be a thing that's added to Signal. Uh, hopefully they end up reconsidering that. So anyway, uh, let's get on to the Band-Aid solution by setting up uh, encrypted proxies for signal users with extreme censorship. So if you are an end user, you're going to want to make sure that you have the latest Android beta of signal installed, which has support for this TLS proxy feature. And then uh, if you're a good Samaritan, so if you're not in the uh, censored country and you want to help the people out that are there, you're going to need a VPS and you're going to need a domain name. And on that VPS, you're going to need to install Docker. So this stuff is going to cost you a very small amount of money to set up, uh, but I can actually help you with that. So I actually have a referral link to this 
website right here, Volter.com, which if you haven't heard of it, it is an awesome site where you can spin up a VPS. Uh, so the link in the description is going to get you a $100 credit to your Volter account when you sign up. And I also get a $10 kickback as well, as long as you use your account for, I think it's more than 30 days and you spend $10 with them. Uh, so really great, helps both of us out. Uh, they even have bare metal options available. So if you need to run some really high performance application that requires that, then you can use it. Uh, but for this project that we're going to do here, we don't need bare metal. We can just use the cloud compute option uh, and it'll work on the lowest end VPS. It's going to have enough CPU memory and enough bandwidth as well. And that starts at $2.50 a month. So not a whole lot of money for just $2.50. You can help somebody in Iran communicate freely. If you're an American, you've already been spending way more than that in tax money over the past few decades to quote unquote, free those countries in the Middle East. Uh, so there you go, not a whole lot of money. And then as far as domains go, um, you can really just buy one from wherever. I mean, the cost of a domain really shouldn't be too high unless you want one that's like really, really short and easy to remember. Um, and also typically, here's a little trick for buying a domain. If you want the cost to be low, you'll also want to avoid TLDs like .com or .org because if your domain ends with that, it's probably going to be a lot more expensive than the same name just ending with .xyz or .us. There's even free domains out there like .tk domains, um, which uh, you can get from .tk, uh, kind of a funny website to remember, but it's right there. Um, now, one little bit of warning about .tk domains, you don't wanna use this for anything professional or anything that's like gonna be a real service, especially not something that you're gonna try and make money off of, uh, because a lot of the time .tk domains get flagged as spam. Uh, a lot of scammers tend to use .tk domains, like if you've ever been to a website that says, oh, you've got malware and you need to call this hotline from Microsoft to talk to someone in India to fix it for you, chances are if you looked up here in the URL bar, you are on a .tk domain. So keep that in mind, uh, you know, they're not actually really good. <laughs> Usually when things are free, they tend to not be that good. Uh, but yeah, this is just for a demonstration purposes and just trying to be a good Samaritan. So go ahead and get whatever domain you want. So once you've got your host and your domain set up and they're uh, you know, connected to one another and you did some basic security for your VPS, like disabling your root accounts login, we can start setting things up. So um, you're going to want to, of course, update your uh, VPS, that's one of the first things to do after you SSH into it. And then we're going to need to apt install docker, docker compose, and get. And you're also going to want to git clone uh, this GitHub link right here. So I've already got it uh, downloaded onto my VPS. I've already installed all my dependencies and updated. Uh, so then we're going to CD into signal TLS proxy. That's what you're gonna get once you um, get the GitHub link. And then we're going to need to run this script right here. So this is going to, uh, you need to run it as root. So this is going to uh, configure a TLS certificate from let's encrypt. Now you're going to want to enter that domain name that you bought. I have this really awesome domain name, Iranian, uh, oh, didn't mean to do that, uh, Iranian Secret Hotline.tk. So um, you're gonna wanna do that. Also, you're going to want to make sure that you already connected the IP address of your VPS to the domain. And usually it takes a few minutes for all the DNS records to update. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. Um, yes, let's replace the existing certificate. All right, and it only takes a few seconds to a minute to run. And then the last step is gonna be to run sudo docker compose up 
detach. And this should just take a little while. So once you do that, you're all set. You now have a secure uh, HTTPS proxy running to Signal servers, and you can go over into your browser to test it. If you have the Signal client uh, on your computer or on your phone, you can go to configure Signal proxy, and then it'll prompt you to open that up uh, inside of your Signal app. And basically what's going on here, to those of you that are just curious what we set up, uh, essentially it's a proxy. So bytes are being forwarded by you to the servers. Uh, so from the government standpoint, or anybody who might be trying to block signal, the end users are talking to you, and they aren't aware that you are forwarding traffic to signal. Um, and then there's also this hashtag that uh, you can tweet or whatever to let people know that you have set up a signal proxy. Uh, actually, I think that Twitter is blocked in Iran, so I don't think that this is really going to help with uh, the people who actually need to use it, figure out what these proxies are. Uh, but I guess at this point, you just pat yourself on the back for doing a good thing. But seriously, signal devs, consider making a federated version of this app so that we don't have to run proxies for you.